In the EU referendum in 2016, Scotland voted overwhelmingly to remain. Scotland's decision was clear and united. Every single council district voted to stay in the EU. But Scotland's rejection of Brexit made no difference. Two years ago, we were wrenched out of the EU regardless. Brexit shone a stark light on the lie we were told ahead of our 2014 independence referendum. Then, the Westminster government stressed repeatedly that the only way to stay in the EU was to stay in the UK. Two years later, we understood the depth of that deceit, the hallmark of the decades-long political divergence between Scotland and England. While England imagines itself as global Britain, we are a protagonist, a global Britain, our range is not confined to the immediate European hinterland. Scotland understands the power of small nations working together. While the UK government framed its immigration policy as creating a hostile environment, Scotland wants to remain a welcoming nation and Scots activists have repeatedly prevented deportations. The Scottish Government has always spoken out against Brexit and in solidarity with EU citizens that have chosen Scotland as their home. You remain welcome here. Scotland is your home and your contribution is valued. Scotland's governing SNP and the Scottish Green Party seek not just independence, but want Scotland to rejoin the EU, goals that gave them their largest ever share of votes and parliamentary seats in the Scottish elections in May. Yet not all Scots feel reassured that Scotland would be welcomed back in the EU. We want to campaign for independence with clarity about our future connection to a continent where we want to work, travel, study, settle, love and live. Therefore, we are asking EU institutions to take a stand and give Scotland the assurance we need, the assurance that we would be welcomed back. Please remember this. Scotland did not let you down. Please, I beg you, cher collègue, do not let Scotland down now. European civil society is already leading the way. Last year, Europe for Scotland published an open letter to EU leaders, signed by leading academics and many of my fellow writers from all across Europe including Elena Ferranti, Daniel Kelman, and Colm Tobin. My colleagues Ian McEwan and Philip Pullman were among many signatories from England. I believe they signed the letter not only from solidarity with us Scots, but also because they hope the end of Brexit will begin in Scotland. Those distinguished signatories have already been joined by thousands of other EU citizens. Their enthusiasm and solidarity have been so heartening I'm confident that as more citizens join them, their politicians will add their voices in support. Rejoining the EU as an independent country would renew close relationships with European countries that were first forged hundreds of years ago, connections whose loss grieves us. Scotland was an independent state until it entered the Union of Great Britain and Ireland in 1707, on an equal footing with England. It remains a nation today, as well as its own devolved government. It has different legal systems, educational arrangements, distinct languages, Gaelic and Scots, and divergent cultural traditions and customs. Already, Scotland has demonstrated its capacity to serve its citizens. We have become a modern, outward-looking nation at a time when England has developed a frightening strand of aggressive populism. Nobody claims Scotland will be a land of milk and honey, where everyone will be happy and whiskey will flow in the streets. We have our problems like any modern democracy. But I think the country we could become is better than the country we are allowed to be at the moment. I'm confident that with the support of our friends in Europe, Scotland will again take its place around the European table where we belong. The letter to EU leaders, signed by Val McDermott and many others, can be found at europeforscotland.com.